Hello and welcome. Close to 500 flights carrying over 58,000 passengers operated on the first day flights resumed across the country after more than a 60-day gap. Now, many of these flights were late, but there were other flights which actually did not even take off and were cancelled, often at the last moment, inconveniencing hundreds if not thousands of passengers who took a lot of trouble reaching the airport in many cities, including, of course, Mumbai, where the lockdown still continues in full force. So the question we are asking is, one, should passengers be even traveling? And we'll try and get a medical input into that. But more importantly, how should passengers treat the next few weeks and months if they want to travel? Should they be taking the risk of booking tickets? And if so, when should they be booking it? And finally, if tickets do get canceled in the manner that they're getting canceled, what recourse do they have? To discuss this, I'm joined by three guests. Uh, Sudhakara Reddy, President of the Air Passengers Association of uh, India, Jitendra Bhargav, former Executive Director of Air India, and for a medical input, Dr. Jinam Shah, Consultant Chest Physician and Interventional Pulmonologist at the Wokhart and Safi Hospitals in Mumbai. And before we start, here's an on-ground report from my colleagues who spoke to passengers who were arriving in Mumbai airport on the 25th of May, the first day flights resumed. Basically, this is that there is no auto, there is no auto, there is no auto, there is no auto, there is no cab. And there is a lot of trouble for those who have a family, I am alone, but who have a family, they have to take all the trouble. They have to do all the trouble, they have to do all the trouble, they have to do all the trouble. So, there is so much heat, there is so much heat, there is so much difficulty, plus there is also a lot of trouble. So, you should take a little care of this thing, so that people don't have trouble. There is no trouble, the flight was at the time, it was very smooth from Bangalore. सिर्फ यहाँ थोड़ा वेटिंग टाइम थोड़ा ज़्यादा लगा करीब करीब एक घंटे चालीस मिनट हेल्थ चेकअप के लिए वेट किया हम लोगों ने टीम इतने देर में आई हाँ यहाँ बहुत देर वेट करना पड़ा डॉक्टर नहीं आया था हम लोग बहुत परेशान हुए Mr. Reddy, your assessment of what we saw at the airports yesterday, particularly from uh, the, the point of view of the passengers who had to travel and of course many of whom faced a lot of difficulties. I would say the average occupancy was between 40 and 45 percent yesterday, according to the latest uh, figures that have been released by the Ministry of Civil Aviation, which, according to me, is very low. And uh, uh, they feel, uh, you know, that uh, this is mainly because uh, of all these procedures that have been laid down, the SOPs and the quarantine in various states. Passengers felt uh, that uh, it's better to postpone and uh, rather than uh, travel. And second thing is, uh, a lot of flights were cancelled yesterday. More than uh, 350 flights were uh, cancelled across the country, mainly from Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, and uh, in a couple of other places. And uh, this has impacted a lot. Uh, a lot of passengers have suffered. You know, to reach the airport in Mumbai, they have no transport, and if they get one, they are asking you for the moon, and uh, they somehow managed to reach there, and then they discovered that their flight was cancelled, because normally, I would say most of the airlines are very efficient in terms of informing you about any cancellation, quite, uh, you know, quite in advance. But then, in this case, uh, I don't know how and why they have not informed the passengers. So these cancellations, I mean, in your understanding, were because, uh, I mean, we know that there is a problem because many cities and states are still wary or have been wary about accepting flights, obviously uh, Mumbai and Maharashtra being the key example. But is that the reason, because they were hoping that they would change their minds at the last moment, or is it something else? No, there are two reasons. One is the load factor. Many airlines found that they did not have enough load to carry, so they cancelled uh, quietly and the other reason is uh, of course once they came to know only at 9 p.m on sunday they got some kind of an idea that if they go to chennai what happens if they go to mumbai what happens if they go to bangalore what happens and you know things like that so we tweeted in fact uh, saying that please don't buy your ticket before you know what you're getting into when you reach your destination so that has been uh, you know very well received right. Traveling public. Right. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Shah is joined. Uh, Dr. Shah has joined us, and thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I know we have to let you go fast. So let me get a sense from you, Dr. Shah. Uh, should people be traveling? I mean, we are talking about uh, you know flights being resumed, and the and the challenges that passengers have to face even as they enter the airport and uh, and onwards. Yeah, so I 
think first of all i mean uh, the virus is not going to be a very short lived virus we know that it's the way of life feel that at least you know the end of uh, 2020 the virus is going to continue so there is no way that you know we can completely lock down the cities for 9 months so we have to find a way that we can, we can travel so i think uh, with all the kind of necessary restrictions like uh, social distancing being followed uh, sanitization of the people washing of hands and also wearing of each and every individual who boards the flight wearing the mask if you are following that then drastically we are likely to reduce the transmission but definitely there is no foolproof method in which you know if we you know do all the necessary precautions also we are still likely to transmit the virus but our point right now is to minimize the virus transmission as low as possible one thing that we can do is uh, you know we take care of the red zones like mumbai city there are a lot of other cities which are in like delhi cities which are in red zone definitely we should avoid travel to and from the from that cities right okay i think we've lost uh, dr shah but we'll get him back uh, mr bargav what's your sense i mean uh, airlines cancelling tickets uh, or rather cancelling flights just ahead of uh, you know i mean the actual departure time uh, is should they be held responsible and if so in what way uh, go in the few points number 1 the country cannot do without flights flights are an integral part of ensuring that our economy moves get back on track when you start recommence the operations there would be hurdle there would be problems and yesterday was one such day when sweep governments give clearance late and unless a person has been a part of an airline you wouldn't really know the kind of problems this create last been created because the aircraft movements have to be re- reworked networking has to be redone from where will the aircraft move from one place to another etc have to be totally reworked so it naturally took time people send just complaining look the flight was cancelled i couldn't reach the help desk of an airline but just assume look at the astronomical number of people calling up the calling up an airline so i would say just take give 3 4 days time to things to get stabilized and you will find everything is back to normal the way it was in the pre covid 19 days that is february 2020 that's one part so we should not be generating an uncalled for fear no no you are saying that is going to come back to that level in a, in a few days time three days mm-hmm. time normal time normal flight schedule i'm talking in th- not in, in, no, in no, three no, days no, time no i'm not talking in terms of the air traffic okay we are not going to reach that in the next two years forget about in the next three oh. four days i'm yeah, talking yeah. about a passenger being certain that i booked a ticket and that flight will be operated got it all the sops in place and as i have been saying very often is that people will have to get used to it in after the 911 we got used to the new security parameters the top one kind of a thing but then ultimately we realized that all these new sops are in our interest for our safety so likewise if you may find it cumbersome to begin with in the first few days but then it will be absolutely normal no what i was right, but, is, but how do we uh, you know but let, let's talk look at this whole uh, flight cancellation because obviously flight cancellation and that too at at a last mo- moment puts a huge burden on passengers in a time like this uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, uh, mr reddy was also saying getting to a airport in a city like uh, mumbai or for that matter many cities in itself is a big journey uh, and then comes the challenge of actually boarding an aircraft and uh, taking off for your destination you know, one can Oh, always question whether 25th may was the right day or could be a wait till the 1st of june after lockdown 40 had ended that was one way of to look at it the second contention is that was there a need to start off with one third of the approved flight schedule which was approved at a time when there was no covid 19 fear or the lockdown had been imposed now if they had done it on a smaller scale surely they would have handled the situation better there wouldn't have been a problem and of course the underlining part is that why weren't the states taken on board and the flight schedule announced only after the states had given their concurrence that would have absorbed a lot of problem for the airline number one passengers wouldn't have gone through the problems that they went through so you know it is basically a multiple factors have played a role in the mini right. start that right. we okay. had so, so, so we'll we'll come to that so i i think what you're saying is therefore that the cancellations that happened uh, is will may, may not happen because airlines airports everyone will get a sense of how things are going to look uh, mr reddy do you agree with that no it is uh, i mean to an extent i would agree with that but then uh, uh, you know originally itself we said uh, you know in fact uh, i've been saying uh, that i have a short story to share with uh, 
you know, viewers. Uh, on uh, Wednesday last, he tweets at 5 p.m. saying that the domestic uh, aviation will uh, begin from 25th of May. By 5.05, some uh, unscrupulous uh, airlines start taking bookings without knowing which destination is going to be permitted at what cost and what time and all that. Then Thursday, he has a press conference where at 3 p.m. he announced that there will be one third of the... Right, and, and you're talking about the civil aviation minister. I mean, just to put things in context. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and one third of the schedule will be in operation. Then he came up with the minimum and maximum and then seven categories of, uh, you know, uh, pricing, uh, depending on the time of uh, flying. Those details came only on Friday. Now, passengers who have been stuck have been booking right from Wednesday, 5.05 p.m. till Friday. Then they continue to book after the DGC issued the schedule and the price band. They continue to book. And uh, only on Sunday evening, things got a little more clearer that, uh, you know, certain cities, they don't want uh, so many flights and certain cities uh, are going to compulsorily quarantine uh, all incoming passengers and, you know, things like that. I mean, it was a very confusing uh, evening. So you're saying the Civil Aviation Ministry clearly has not instructed the airlines uh, uh, properly about which sectors they could be allowed and left it to the airlines to decide? Except no, apart from announcing the date, this civil aviation minister should not, should not have tweeted. First of all, tweet is not the way you convey what you're going to do to the public when so many stakeholders are involved. He should have called a meeting of all the stakeholders, which includes the states and other you know travel agencies and airlines and airports and you know all of them, and then taken their uh, feedback and then decided. Uh, in a press conference as to what he's going to do. I mean, it is very sad that, uh, you know, things have been done in such a manner where uh, it is not acceptable to a passenger. There are thousands of passengers yesterday who have spent more than 3,000 rupees to reach the airport and then their flight was cancelled. And that money, airlines are not willing to refund. They are saying that we'll keep it in a credit share. Credit. I mean, what right do they have? Because they have cancelled. For whatever reason, they have cancelled. Now, when they cancel, they are duty-bound to refund the money to the passenger, which they are not willing to do. So, I am Is there a way for the passenger to find out whether their flight has been cancelled because of such reasons, i.e. a reduction of load factor? No, they just did not send any message. Because they don't want to disclose... The usually, airlines, I mean, airlines do this normally, but they usually bunch up flights. They say, okay, this flight is half going half empty and the next one is going half empty, so you bunch up. So I'm cancelling this flight, but I'm putting you on the next one. Yeah, that is, that's okay. No, That will be maximum one hour or two hours. Here, if you have cancelled, my entire travel plan has gone for a six. And then they are okay. not allowing them to reschedule because everything is, uh, you know, very... Confusing, you know, uh, when I can go back uh, to the city where I wanted to go. You know, there is one lady who went all the way from uh, Delhi to Bangalore. And in Bangalore, so they asked her for certain ID and she did not carry that. Then she was asked to go back to Delhi. And there was a passenger who came from uh, uh, Delhi to Chennai. Then he took the Chennai Coimbatore Indigo flight and he tested positive on arrival. How is it he escaped all these SOPs uh, laid down? So there are a lot of uh, interesting stories that one can go on. Sharing. And, and the point being that this could have been avoided. Uh, uh, Mr. Bhargav, so, you know, uh, you're saying that in, in a couple of days, we should uh, uh, reach some kind of normalcy uh, in this new normal. So are you confident uh, looking at the, fa I mean, looking at how we've either been handling or mishandling operations so far? She leave the mishandling apart. Sudhakar has elaborated in a big way and explained. Once you get the uncertainty out, all states are on board. Best being all from the 28th, you know, the dates are finalized. So they'll be able to put a certain number of flights that they've been allocated and they will operate those and they will sell tickets on those flights. What happened yesterday was that people had booked the tickets and there were only a couple of flights 
you could not have accommodated passengers. But if the only airlines had tried and said, okay, or the ministry had played a role and said, we will allow interlining in the first week of the operations. So if you are booked on Indigo and you somehow that flight has got cancelled, I will accommodate you on a SpiceJet flight or an Air India flight. Okay. All the things could have been thought of, anticipated and worked. But then you need people who have practical experience to be running the civil aviation ministry, which unfortunately is not the case. So that's why I'm saying left to airlines with their fixed schedule, fixed sale of tickets. So then in the next 48 hours, you will find them running the flights and passengers will have no complaint. When one thing what's happened was in the new booking schedule or the system that they'd introduced to take care of the coronavirus thing, they had said all passengers will necessarily give their mobile numbers. So I yes. to understand why the airlines could not send an SMS adequately in advance to say your flight right. is cancelled. So it, it's obviously, I mean, there are multiple uh, slip ups and goof ups and failures. So, okay, uh, 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 Mr. Reddy, can I come to you now? So, you know, uh, as uh, we go on, I mean, we know the lockdown 4.0 is supposed to lift uh, on the 31st of May. Uh, 1st June, but whether it lifts and where it lifts is something that we no longer, I guess, are uh, in a position to speculate about. But more importantly, if I have to travel and uh, and I have to travel, then uh, should I book a ticket now? Or should I wait till closer, the, closer to the date? What should I be doing? I personally feel you can wait closer to the date because you will get plenty of uh, tickets. No hmm. flight is going to go except two flights yesterday, according to our uh, information. All other flights went at a very low load factor. So you know, one can wait to buy a ticket, but only you'll have to shell out more money. But you have a cap. No, you yeah, have a cap. I think the uh, cap that, ticket would have been purchased uh, by others. The so best if you buy in the last 24 hours, you're bound to be ending up paying more money. So if you're no, willing no. to take that risk, no, go ahead no, and no, do it. No, no, no. The cap, maximum uh, uh, cap has been fixed. They can't charge more than that. For Mumbai, Delhi, for example, 10,000 10, is the 000. maximum. They can't charge uh, as they wish. Mr. Reddy, I'm not talking about 10,000. If I can get a ticket for 4,000 rupees today, why must I pay 10,000 rupees? Sure, I, now? I, I, I think so the point is that in these times, if you're desperate to travel, then uh, maybe the the you are not you're not really looking for bargains uh, because you're traveling. I mean, I mean, I'm oh, assuming that. It is only the desperate people who are getting on board, so they will be willing to pay money. But this will be for the first week, because all those people who got stranded would have traveled in the first one week. And subsequent right. to that, it will be the normal passengers who will then, your pertinent question comes in here, are they willing to take the risk to, under, to undertake travel? A small right, and and that's a question yes. we are hoping our doctor, uh, doc, our, uh, the doctor who joined us, and, uh, unfortunately got cut off, but uh, has answered to some extent that yes, uh, this will be a way of life. The virus is around; it's not going away on the first of June or even the first of September, for that matter. And therefore, we have to find ways of uh, living with it and uh, and and obviously traveling uh, as safely and in in the best possible way. But that too is not a guarantee that you will not transmit or receive but you will definitely reduce the chances if you take the right precautions. We've run out of time. Thank you both for joining me and hope to see you back again as we continue this uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you.